In this video, we're going to look at some examples of solving absolute value inequalities. So first, we're going to solve each inequality, then we're going to graph the solution set, and then we're going to write the solution set in interval notation. Letter A, the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than 17. So first, we want to make sure the absolute value is by itself on one side, which it is. So now we can consider what we have. So it says the absolute value is less than 17. So it needs to be closer than 17 to 0 on a number line. When it's less than, less than is an and. That's going to be your conjunction, less than and conjunction. So that means if it's going to be closer than uh, 17 units from 0 on a number line, that it's going to be in between negative 17 and 17. So we would write it as uh, negative 17 has to be smaller than this here, which has to be smaller than 17. This is one of those compound inequalities where we have three sides, quote unquote. We want to get x by itself in the middle. It's being uh, subtracted by 6. To undo that, we will add 6 to all three sections. So we add it in the middle, we add it to the left, and we add it to the right. Negative 17 plus 6, that's negative 11, is less than x is less than 17 plus 6 is 23. So this would be the algebraic solution. That part's done, but we still have two more pieces left. First we need to graph, then we need to write it in interval notation. Now this graph could be really, really long. If I, do, if I count in increments of 1s, then I would have to go at the very least negative 11 up to 23, which is going to, that's a lot of number line. So I can be smart about this. Um, I can count by twos, they're both odd, so if I count by twos, that might work better. I might even be able to count by fours. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Let's see. Um, but what I can do is I can count by twos, but not write every single tick mark, because that's going to take a lot of time, and we don't want to sit here and watch me do make tick marks. We just need to be careful. You can't say that this is negative 11, this is negative 9, and this is uh, 8. Uh, it has to be consistent. So if this one, if there's a distance of 2 here, there should be a distance of 2 here. We want to make sure we're really careful with that on our number lines. Um, but one thing I can do, I can write negative 11, negative 9. I can skip negative 7. So there's negative 7, but I'm not going to write it just to save space. I'm going to skip negative 3. I'm going to skip 1, skip 5, skip 9. Is this going to work? Is this going to work? Skip 13, skip 17. Oh, just squeezed it in. Um, so I was able to count by twos, but just to kind of space it out, I just I didn't write every other one. But you can see everything is still representing a distance of two on my number line. It's going to be an open circle over negative 11, an open circle over 23, and it's going to be all the numbers in between negative 11 and 23. In interval notation, it would start at negative 11 where we don't include it, so we use the uh, parenthesis, and it goes up to 23 where we also don't include it, so we would use the parenthesis. These would be the three different ways to express the solution set for letter A. If you want to, you can test one of these numbers just to make sure that, in fact, you do end up with a correct inequality. While it won't verify that your answer is 100% accurate, you at least know you're on the right track. Um, so you can do that. That's called uh, using a test point just to verify your solution. So we could try that. Let's just say, so what's one number that's a solution? How about negative 9? So let's plug in x is equal to negative 9. That would be the absolute value of negative 9 minus 6 is less than 17. If you are doing a test point or any time you're checking your solution, you should never be super, super confident. Not that you're not doing it right, but we just want to be mathematically accurate here. So because we're not positive, we put a question mark over the inequality. Is it really less than 17? Let's find out. Negative 9 minus 6 is negative 15. Negative 15, the absolute value of negative 15 is 15. So we end up with 15 is less than 17. That is a true statement. So again, it doesn't verify that this is in fact the right answer, but at least we know we found a solution, which is better than finding out that we have a mistake somewhere. So that's just a nice check to make sure that, OK, I at least did something right. In letter B, we have the absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 12. In this case, the absolute value is already by itself, so that's great news. We can consider what we're talking about here. So we need the absolute value to be bigger than, further than, or equal to 12 on a number line. 
there are two intervals where this happens. X plus 4 could be greater than or equal to 12, or X plus 4 could be less than or equal to negative 12. Anytime we see the greater, think greater or, it's going to be an or situation. There's going to be two distinct solution sets. We want to solve each one, so we're going to take away 4 from both sides of the first inequality, then we have x is greater than or equal to 8. Or over here, we're going to take away 4 from both sides, and we get x is less than or equal to negative 16. So this would be the algebraic representation of the solution on a graph. Again, I want to be smart about the increments. If I have to write each one, it's going to take a long time. In this case, you can use intervals of 2s, 4s, or 8s. Um, We'll use 4s just so that way we at least include some numbers. So we'll do negative 16. I just said 4 is negative 12, negative 8. I think I'm going to regret this. Four. Oh, it worked. It worked. It worked. I got it. Great. All right. Now, how do I represent x is greater than or equal to 8? That's a closed circle over 8 with an arrow going to the right. How do I represent x is less than or equal to negative 16 on a number line? That's a closed circle over negative 16 with the arrow going to the left. For interval notation, we want to base it off what we see on the number line, just so that way the order is correct, because here the, the, they're kind of like backwards for interval notation. Um, so this is saying that it's the numbers from negative infinity to negative 16. We include negative 16, so we use the bracket. Or they pick back up at 8, and then they just keep getting bigger without bound. This would be the interval notation. Again, if you want to, you can use the test point method just to make sure that you at least have one correct solution of the, our infinitely many solutions. That's an optional step for you to take. If you want to do the test point method, maybe we check, so what's something that's in between negative infinity and negative 16? How about negative 17? So does the absolute value of negative 17 plus 4, is it really bigger than or equal to 12? And again, we put that question mark because we shouldn't be absolutely positive that what we did was correct because everybody makes mistakes. Negative 17 plus 4 is negative 13. The absolute value of negative 13 is 13, and 13 is greater than or equal to 12. So at least we found one single solution. Yay! Go us! In this video, we're going to solve letter C. Uh, of these three examples. You'll notice that in this video, C has changed slightly from what it was when I was working through A and B. So please note the changes. This is now plus 9, and this is negative 11. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have any uh, special cases with this, so I had to change them uh, ever so slightly. So here we go for C. What we notice is that uh, the absolute value in letter C is not by itself. We need to get it isolated before we can consider cases. I see there's a negative over here. That's not good. But if we isolate the absolute value, maybe that will go away. First, um, we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. We treat the absolute value like it's a variable. And so if that was a variable, let's just say x. If it said negative 4 times x plus 9, the first thing you would do is take away 9. We do the same thing with our absolute value. So we're going to take away 9 from both sides. That's going to leave us with negative 4 times the absolute value of z minus 5 is greater than negative 20. A lot of students get really tempted. They see grouping symbols. They see a number in front of it. They're like, oh, I got this. I need to distribute. No. With absolute value, we do not ever distribute the number. Half the time, it's going to be wrong. And unfortunately, half the time, it is you would end up with the right answer, but mathematically it's incorrect. We cannot distribute inside an absolute value. What's another way that we can move something that's being multiplied to the other side, or how can we cancel it out? We can divide by that number. So if I divide both sides by negative 4, wait, we're talking about an inequality here. What does that do? That flips the inequality around. So the negative 4 is canceled. We're left with z minus 5. But this greater than just became a less than. So it's now less than. Negative 20 divided by negative 4 is positive 5. Now we have the absolute, value, the absolute value by itself. The absolute value is less than 5 units from 0 on a number line. Less than is an and situation. So we're talking about numbers that are in between negative 5 and positive 5. So we can set up a compound inequality. Negative 5 is less than z minus 5, which is less than 
5. We want to isolate z in the middle. Uh, since it's being subtracted by 5, we will add 5 to the three different sides. Remember with this compound inequality, there are three sides that we're working with. So I add 5 in the middle. I add 5 to the left. I add 5 to the right. Maintaining the equality in this compound. Maintain the inequality in this compound inequality. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0, is less than z, is less than 5 plus 5 is 10. So here's the algebraic representation of the solution uh, in a graph. So I can count by twos or I can count by ones. It really doesn't matter here. I'll count by twos though just to save some time. So it would look like this. It's counting by twos, so let's not put a seven there. Twelve. In this case, zero would be an open circle and ten would be an open circle. And the solutions lie in between zero and ten. So graphically, we would have open circles over zero and ten with a line segment connecting the two. In interval notation, this would be from 0 to 10 with parentheses.